each year we find ourselves encompassed again in the cold and dark of winter as the days get shorter and the nights get longer. The longest of these is December 21st, the winter solstice. It is a couple of days before the longest night and we come together on this night to pray and remember the promise of Christ's light in the midst of darkness. While holidays are joyful for some, others of us find ourselves in time of grief, fear, and loneliness. We come here as a faith community to lament, sing, and reflect. We believe that the light of God will shine its way through the darkness surrounding us. Would you pray with me? God, we come to you weary, worn, and weak searching for the presence of the Christ child amid our grief and pain. You know this year what we have experienced, the burdens and sorrow we bring to you tonight. Hold us close even when we feel so distant from you. Surround us with your light of comfort and peace. Help us feel your loving spirit once more. Amen.
We light this first candle to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember clearly their faces, their voices, their bodies. We embrace and give thanks for the memories that bind them to us in this season of expectation when all creation waits for the light. We remember them with love. May God's eternal love surround them. We light this second candle to remember the pain of loss, loss of relationships, loss of trust, loss of jobs, loss of health, loss of faith, the loss of joy. We acknowledge and embrace the pain of the past, O God, and we offer it to you, asking that into our wounded hearts and open hands, you will place the gift of peace, shalom. We remember that through you, all things are possible. Refresh, restore, renew us, O God, and lead us into your future. In the light of this third candle, our reflection is illuminated. We remember the days, weeks, and months of this year that have gone by. Some have been good for us, and others not quite. We acknowledge the grief, fear, and anger, recognizing the pain we have felt and that which we have inflicted on others. God, we lay this all before you. It is our prayer that your light might shine within us, even in times of struggle. We remember that though we have journeyed far and that while lost, we may have turned away from the light. The light itself has not failed. We remember that though winter be upon us and though the night is dark, with the turning of the wheel, the dawn will come and light defeats the darkness. This fourth candle reminds us that there is hope that even on the longest night, Christ's light shines, beckoning us towards the kingdom, towards love eternal. The Christ child was born in a time of chaos, in a world experiencing turmoil. We know that even when our struggles seem to be consuming us, Christ is present with peace to share. We remember the one who shares our burdens, who shows us the way to the light, and who journeys with us into all our tomorrows.
The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to devour my flesh, my adversaries and foes, they shall stumble and fall. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war rise up against me, yet I will be confident. One thing I ask to the Lord, that will I seek after to live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will set me high on a rock. Now my head is lifted up above my enemies, around, all around me. And I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud. Be gracious to me and answer me. Come, my heart says, seek his face. Your face, Lord, do I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You who have been my help. Do not cast me off. Do not forsake me, O God of my salvation. If my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path. Because of my enemies, do not give me up to the will of my adversaries. For false witnesses have risen against me and they are breathing out violence. I believe that I shall see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. thinking and pondering and writing about paradox for many years now and really just where contradicting things can live in the same space at the same time. And I really love what uh, Father Richard Rohr says about when we can embrace the paradoxes in ourself, then we can embrace the paradoxes in other people as well. And I would just add with God as well. There's something about honoring that hard contradictory thing contradictory things can live in the same space at the same time so in the middle of the deepest grief and loss that i'm experiencing in my family i can also be celebrating really good things that are happening in my life in my kids life um, by just owning that i don't have to have one or the other that they can both be in the same day in the same breath in the same moment and that they're usually right next to each other. It makes me think of um, a story of a friend. I had a, fr a dear friend who died of cancer 
earlier this year, and it was a long, hard road. She was a fighter, and um, and her dying in the middle of our grief, it just was just a storm of pain. Um, but I needed to do her memorial service, and I wanted to do her memorial service. And I'll always remember it because it was January and February in it was February in Colorado, and it was like an 80 degree day, the day before her memorial service. And the day of her memorial service, it was like 19 degrees and a blizzard. And she had such a hard life. And I was like, why couldn't it have not been the sunny day? But the truth was those two days next to each other really was the story. And so in the middle of so much of her heart and her life, there was also good. In the middle of so much in my life, there's also good in the middle of everybody's life, my friends who live outside, my friends who are healing from deep, deep trauma, my friends who can't pay the bills, my friends who are in really, really rough circumstances on every way, shape, or form, there still is, can be joy. There still can be connection. There still is. Our friends who bring us things at the refuge to come get food, bring food to give to somebody else and then take what they need. To me, that's paradox. Like it, all the hard and all the good is together. And the Jesus story is like that over and over again. I mean, it's just got it all in it at the same time. It's not either or, it's both and. And I frankly get tired of practicing paradox. It's tiring. For me, the danger is in making anything binary. I mean, it's easier. It is easier, but it's not healthier. And it's not the true story. The fullness of the story are contradicting things in the space, same space at the same time. And that part of the problem is we have been taught to squeeze one out and to do anything we can to make it only the good or lean fully into the worst and not be able to see any light in the middle, uh, the absence of light, the middle of darkness to not see anything good. And it's hard, it's a strain. I'm not saying it's easy. None of this is a formula. You don't just go, oh, okay, so now I can do this. You know, it really is learning to do what we can to own all of it instead of to try and only have the pieces that feel a certain way um, or that the world tells us is good. And I really do think that even though practicing paradox that can be tiring sometimes, it's also really freeing. And it's really freeing because we don't try and have to work to get rid of the hard. And we don't have to um, feel bad about the good. And that's, that's tricky. In fact, I know this a lot in a lot of um, stories of friends, like sometimes you feel bad for feeling good. And especially right now in the world, you know, it's like, I'm not allowed to feel good. The world's falling apart. It's really hard. You know, there, we're talking about huge systemic change in the right direction um, in so many ways because a lot of our unhealthy systems are being dismantled and they need to be. But then people feel bad for feeling good and not doing enough and, you know, having any joy when there's so much struggle and strife in the world. And I just think this is, you know, kind of goes back to the more honest we can be that we just can live with all of it together, the better we do. Um, but it's trick. It's, it's definitely not science. It's definitely not science. It's, it's an art and it's, it takes practice. I mean, I feel it all the time. I think that, that why kind of honoring reality and practicing honesty and then embracing paradox go together is because one of the ways that we can embrace paradox is by just being more honest and kind of letting things be instead of resisting them. And so to me, that's a huge part of the practice is just kind of taking in the parts and not having it all figured out and making sense. I'm not saying paradox is pretty. 
And so it kind of makes me think a little bit of like a mosaic, you know, there's all broken, there's all these broken pieces. Um, and it doesn't even make sense until, you know, some of it starts to come in a little bit. And then sometimes you can't even see the design. But there's something, you know, the whole mess somehow from another perspective looks different. But always there's danger in trying to make something look good. I think embracing paradox helps us survive. So it helps us keep making it. I think it helps us thrive too. I think it helps us thrive because I think it, it breaks down the need to have it look a certain way or to conform to a certain um, unrealistic expectation that either we placed on ourselves or systems placed on us. And sometimes in the name of God, I think on the whole it just releases that and it frees us. It just frees it up to be that it can be in the same space at the same time. So we can be in the deepest grief and have gratitude at the same time. But it's also not, a sun, they don't have to be equal. It doesn't have to be, okay, for this much grief, then I have to have this much gratitude. See, there we go again, every single time, you know, we want it to all be neat and tidy. I think embracing paradox just helps us be. It helps us be, and it helps us just kind of own that we're human. Humans are uh, paradoxical. I am, other people are, and certainly our faith is. And so that's a bit of a really freeing thing for me is just to kind of see God as paradox too. You know, there's a lot that I don't know. I don't have to know. And there's a lot of contradictions in the world of faith. And I think just kind of owning that and embracing that is freeing. Anytime you can, you know, kind of see the contradictions all in the same space. You know, I think of like when you're outside and you're in beauty and nature, but you're freezing cold at the same time. You know, I think that there's a million ways of just noticing. And I think that it's okay to put periods at the end of pain. We don't have to say, Oh, it's so hard, but da 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 da. da. Um, I think it's okay to say it's so hard, period. And then in uh, the next breath, it might be it's so whatever. You know, we don't have to every single time it is something's hard. We always add a good. I think that is a dangerous practice to feel. Like every time I've got to outweigh it with something else. I don't think that that's embracing paradox. I think it's just taking each thing of what it is and letting the whole picture be okay for whatever those things are. Because I always want to be careful. People don't have to go, I have to find light in the darkness. I have to find good in the bad. I have to find, you know, some silver lining in the cloud. That is never what I am saying. I always just think like, let this part be, and then let that part be, and let that part be, and that part be, and be all together in whatever way it's supposed to be. I wrote this thing called pain. It was a blog post and all this last, I can't remember when I wrote it, but I just put pain, period. <laughs> and I do it all the time, you know, because I am a hopeful person, and, but I'm really trying not to. I'm not trying to put the butt on every single time. Um, even the and. I'm just trying to take this and put a period on it and take a different thing and put a period on it, whatever that thing is. And it's been really helpful, but it's foreign. And I think it's foreign to a lot of us, and especially people of faith, because there is this thing that we aren't allowed to just sit with the pain. We've always got to put something on it and it's a good practice. Just like in recovery, you know, you just stay with your own story and then you don't have people cross-talking and building on it. You just go, thanks for sharing, period. <laughs>
May our God, the God of light and life, support us all the day long in this troubled life. May God grant us safe lodging, a holy rest, and peace at last in God's boundless mercy. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever.